Hey beloveds, this is your sister Truth Seeker 5000, BKA Evangelist Don B. Anderson, getting on here uh, for a medical update uh, from my recent gastric specialist, gastric enterologist specialist. Um, basically, that's a person who deals specifically with the digestive system. Uh, for those who don't know, I've actually, for the past two and a half months or so, been experiencing extreme right abdominal pain which is has since radiated to my back uh, it pains me to just sit up like this um, I can't keep any food down I've lost a lot of weight in a short time I'm in and out of the hospital and uh, to visiting my primary physician uh, getting CT MRI escoscopy tests all these tests I can't pronounce and no one knew anything about what was going on with me until the other day uh, as many of you know the hospital called me and told me to come back in because I was still so very ill after having just left there from them and also the truths told me to go back my truth seeker 5,000 subscribers um, told me to go back so I did uh, and that's when I actually found out by the doctor then and then from the same GI doctor uh, from yesterday that I went to visit that what I have is actually called gastroparesis. Uh, it's when your stomach can't contract and empty itself of food. Uh, the nerves that control the digestive system are damaged. Uh, one of the, the, the main problems is from my out of control diabetes type 2. Uh, the food cannot move through my digestive system properly. Uh, the food either comes back up uh, or it sits in my stomach for hours or days which is not good because the food can it ferment and grow bacteria um, and while all of this is happening no food is getting into my system actually even though there's food sitting there on my stomach it's not really getting into my body and feeding it the nutrition uh, that it needs nor is it hydrating uh, my body. Um, I've done online research and I found that there, there are a lot of problems and uh, surgeries that come with this illness um, and there's no cure for it. It's a chronic illness with absolutely no cure. They just have a lot of dangerous treatment medications uh, even that some that my doctor confirmed that they call black box medicine. Uh, black box medicine is a very uh, dangerous medicine that has extreme side effects such as uh, my doctor said mouth clicking and it will cause nervous twitches. Uh, they right now even have me on so much medication of several bottles of medication here several bottles and I just it's too much too much medication uh, I asked the GI doctor a question yesterday you know and I want to say this to you all like now I'm not a doctor I'm not a counselor or anything uh, I'm not telling you what to do with yourself and your medication, but I'm telling you what I'm not going to do with mine inside of my body. So that was just a, the disclaimer. Uh, but I said to the doctor, I said, it, now, if my system is not digesting natural food that the body is made to ingest and digest, uh, if my body, y'all want me to eat now like applesauce through a straw, you know, <laughs> pre-chewed food in my system to help my system break down this food. How pray tell will all of these mini rock pills that I have, and some of them I have to take some, I'm supposed to be taking them several times a day for seven whole days a week. How is my system supposed to digest that well? And the doctor had absolutely no answer for me. It, it because you know I'm a thinker. 
I, I, I think. So I have to, I have to think and say, I can't digest natural food, but all of these pills, okay, and a lot of them is not even working for me anymore. I mean, and whatever it was supposed to have been doing, it's, it's not doing it. And I have to take these every single day. How are those pills going to digest? You, you, you don't have to be a, a scientist or a medical, you know, marvel to understand or come to the conclusion that all of those pills they don't really digest in your system. They rock up, okay, and lock up somewhere. Some of those pills. Um, you know, I did a test where I've, you know, put some in a a glass of pop or you know and let it sit there and it did not you know dissolve I stopped taking these pills but um you know my thing is I, I've come to this conclusion that after I do these two more confirmation tests and doctor visits next week about this illness um, I will have made the decision to no longer take any of the medication that they will want to prescribe to me for this illness, um, I'm I've stopped taking these as of the other day. The the whole bag I just showed you after I was diagnosed with that and made to understand uh, what it was because I didn't know what it was. That's why I was taking the, the medicine, you know, at first because I thought it was something that was going to eventually get rid of what the problem was. But there's no cure. I'm not taking that every day of my life this medicine is not short term at all you know but I have to take it for as long as I live and I refuse to turn drugs into an idol you know I know how God hates idols God in Christ Jesus is a healer you know according to our faith he we can be healed he gives us the that measure of faith even but even if he decides not to heal me I still would not take all of those drugs because nine times out of ten they won't even work for me if they did I will be cured but like I said there's no cure for this illness and you know for many many of the drugs they have their own side effects even the doctor warned me of that I had researched it myself as well so it means I will then need to take more drugs for the drugs that I'm taking already to calm the new symptoms that are worse than my original symptoms now, I don't feel like there's nothing wrong with you taking a vitamin pill daily or blood pressure pill to regulate your blood pressure. I have high blood pressure too. Or taking your diabetes insulin, you know, a day. But when the excess of the other drugs make you start making you dependent, you know, and you're taking all of these drugs, so many bottles and so many, it, it becomes a problem. You know, plus many drugs open up gateways to demonic possession. Now, even though a believer cannot be demon possessed, it's impossible. If you have the Holy Spirit living in you, you cannot be demon possessed. Uh, but we can be bothered by the demons. So I refuse to live like that. Jesus said that I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I don't believe this is what he meant for a believer. I'm a believer. I'm a follower of, and servant of Jesus Christ. So it is to him that I stand or fall to. So whether I live healthy from him healing me or I die like the many others with this illness have, with the illness, I'm going to do it in faith. I'm not in control. He's in control. Like I said, even if I do take all of those drugs, there's no cure. I'm just deteriorating from the inside out at a slower pace just basically I just basically be living to die you know I'm gonna overlook my insurance policy life insurance policy and see what I if I can even get an increase or I'm gonna prepare my family with more specific instructions on what my will is after I die such as where I want to be buried and the fact that I don't want a funeral you know if if you guys can't be there I don't want to have one you know 
there's really only like one handful of people I would want to come if I did want a funeral anyway. Plus, honey, you know, where I am going, I'm, I'm alive. I'll be alive. Jesus promised me and you a home and a mansion. That's where I'll be, you know. I'll be back with him and the rest of the saints back here later, okay? So no tears are necessary. Don't come to no, no gathering for me with tears. You know, where are the tears and prayers and word of encouragement and, and kindness from any of them now? You know, that I'm going through what I'm going through or even just to check on me if, if my family did not know what I was going through and, and so-called friends, which many have been found to be friend, frenemies that I had to let go recently. You know, but I'm not bothered because I, I live a secluded lifestyle You try to try to keep out of drama mostly. You know, I came in this world by myself and I will die and make that transition over to the other shore alone. So I'm good. I'm at peace with it. You know, I know that I what I have done and, you know, with my life, I don't regret living my life, for spreading the gospel these last 15 years of my life. Um, I, I fought the good fight. Uh, of course, I don't want to live the rest of my life out in pain. I'd rather live it out on the road evangelizing. But whatever the will of God is, you know, it's up to him. If Jesus say, well done, good and servant, you faithful servant, you've done enough. It's your time. Pack your bags. Get your spiritual bags ready. You're going home. Then out of faith that's what I'm going to prepare to do I'm not trying to hold on to this world this world is getting ready to pass away you know and I really don't want to be here in this this abomination ball of abomination any longer than I have to be you know my whole agenda has been since I've been uh, working for the Lord has been I want to do what I'm put here to do and when my job is done, I want to go. And that's just how I feel about it, you know. So like I said, this is just my view and my wishes for my life. You know, some people may still fear uh, not taking a drug because if they don't, doctors and people say they're going to die. But my thing has always been, see, I, I don't do threats. See, death can't threaten me or put me in, put fear in me. You know, to make me submit to doing something that will so-called prevent the death from happening. Jesus has already defeated death and hell for us, saints. Okay, we have nothing to fear on God's green earth because nothing can destroy our souls but God. So he's the only one whom I have my eye on and my faith in. Okay, when faced with this diagnosis, I had to ask myself, what would Jesus do? You know, would he have taken all of these drugs and or would he have had faith in the Father for a healing? Exactly. <laughs> God tells us in the Bible 365 times to fear not. That is one reminder for every day that we live, every day of the year. So I will not fear. And I encourage you all not to fear anything but God and Christ Jesus either. It will be okay. So don't cry for me, but continue to pray for me as I do for you guys. Stay strong. I'll stay strong. You guys are helping me to stay strong. I just want you to know that because sometimes we do get weak. You know, I'm not superwoman. You know, sometimes I, I do get down. I do get weak. And, you know, it's God that brings you guys in you know with that love and encouragement when I'm feeling down or somebody into your life when you're feeling the same way you know I have to tell you guys uh, that I have had times where uh, I was down and you know just really feeling out of it but I read your comments and your words of encouragement and it just touched me and it, it helped lift me back up you know and and, and it's so funny that during those times that I was feeling 
like that I was high off the morphine or the pills you know that's why I said another thing about that gateway drugs they will you know have your mind where you're not able to concentrate and focus you're not in your right mind so the enemy can get in there and he can play tricks on your mind and things because you're not coherent because the drugs have you you know so during those times because I had been in so much pain I would be in so much pain you know I felt that's what I had to take you know to get relief but not anymore I'll just have to deal with what I have to deal with but I just choose to trust the Lord and the Lord's saints God has a remnant of people you know I just believe God for this healing I just believe uh, as well that we're coming to an end we are um, I've always believed that the rapture is right around the corner so if I go uh, Jesus is not gonna be that far behind me to come get the rest of y'all that's just my belief um, because in the spirit and from what the prophets are saying as well in God's church and from saints alike we don't have much time that's what the spirit has been saying to me as I'm out witnessing to people Jesus is coming soon very soon so you need to pack get to packing your spiritual bags and getting your house in order as well because uh, remember first Thessalonians 4 16 he's going to come back with the shout of an archangel he's going to come down to earth and he's going to call up the dead in Christ first if I die I mean I'm going up first <laughs> and then y'all coming up behind me you know and we're all going to meet with him in the air and we're going to be with him we're going to have the feast of the lamb we're going to have the judgment seat of Christ first okay the bema the bema seat of Christ okay that's where everything that uh, we have done good or bad is, is being judged what Paul told us talked about and we'll get our crowns our rewards and then we'll have the feast of the lamb and y'all gonna have me up in here teaching it's so good oh, it's so good all I know I ain't gonna tell you because I try to keep this short for y'all is that uh, we all gonna be going soon home so uh, just cross your T's and dot your I's while you're here okay with that being said I love you so much you guys stay strong as will I and I'll talk to you soon blessings beloved mm -hmm.